Walk down the Stalger Lane, walk down the Stalger Lane, walk with me down the Stalger Lane. Meep, 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 meep,
especially with Empire Strikes Back. I was like, man, they really cut out a lot of this movie. <laughs> like, it's much better just to watch the movie. Um, but with Gremlins, I remember, like, reading along on this little storybook and listening to the record, even though my mom wouldn't let me see the movie. So it's so weird. It was always weird to me that, okay, this is clearly for kids. <laughs> so why, why can I not see it? Because it seemed like, a, you know, my mom thought it was too scary or whatever. Um, so I didn't see it in the theater. I saw it when it came out on cable, like, you know, several months or a year later or whatever. Um, and then watched it a few times after that. But I was already super into it just from listening to this record album. And um, it's weird because it is very much a kid's movie. Uh, and I'll get into it a little bit more when I get into what I think of it now. I'm um, watching it now. Um, I, I do realize all of the things that I loved about this movie were, were definitely appealing to kids. Uh, so it was like the gremlins running around singing Christmas carols going wee, 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 and like doing all the silly stuff. They were always dressing up in costumes and they were playing poker and like one of them was dressed up as a lady and oh, they were all dressed up in like 1800s costumes playing poker and doing silly stuff and wearing tutus and, and uh, break dancing and um, just doing all kinds of silly things. And that was perfectly for kids. Like, that was, like, made for 10 years old and younger kids, like myself and my siblings. Uh, it was perfect for kids. And yet, uh, uh, Billy's mother, uh, the main character, Billy, his mother puts one uh, gremlin in a fucking, uh, like, food processor and it goes splattering everywhere and then puts the other one in the microwave and it explodes. What the fuck? Like, what the fuck? Like, that's, uh, that really grossed me out when I f first saw it. That's, like, more of a thing for, um, you know, I don't know, like, slasher movies. Like, when you're going to do something really gross. It's weird that it was marketed for kids so much. But then that, I, I thought that was a little much. <laughs> um, and if I, bel if I remember correctly, I believe this was one of the first PG-13 films it was rated pg-13 so not quite r but a little harsher than pg um but um watching it now i do realize that <laughs> um i loved it so much because i was 10 years old <laughs> and then everything about it is absolutely appealing to 10 years old 10 year olds and um uh, might be why i didn't really revisit it much after you know the, the late 80s, like three or four or five years later, probably the last time that I watched it. So um, this probably explains why, because I was starting to get older and realizing how dumb the movie was. But um, at the time, I absolutely loved it. I listened to that record album a hundred times, read along the little story. And then when the movie came out on cable, watched it a bunch of times. We taped it, you know, like we always do. Uh, I've mentioned this in my other nostalgia videos. Uh, watched it a hundred times, um, but uh, very much, <laughs> very much was appealing to my 10-year-old self. Okay, now part three. Oh, what did I think of the movie after my recent rewatch? I think I've probably already hinted at this a little bit. Um, before I actually get into my opinion of it, I do want to just point out uh, Corey Feldman is in this. I completely one million percent forgot that Corey Feldman was in this movie like I knew it at the time I think it was probably one of his earlier film appearances because this is before he's gone through puberty this is before his voice change which uh, a couple years later in the um, film that I had reviewed a couple months ago the Goonies his voice has changed so he's probably right on the verge of puberty here he's like a younger kid and I completely one million percent forgot that he's in this movie also Judge Reinhold is in this movie <laughs> I forgot about Judge Reinhold being in this movie he's in a bunch of 80s movies um so uh I just wanted to mention that because I forgot all about that so uh for the film itself um, tis a silly movie. <laughs> yeah, it's a very silly movie. Uh, also surprisingly boring. Like, I just kind of, I don't know what it was. Like, I just could not get into it. Um, 
I kept like checking my phone and, and uh, going on my laptop and looking on Facebook and like I was just bored especially like the first hour of the movie while they were setting things up I'm like yeah yeah and it's funny like I don't really remember this film at all it's not like it's like oh I've seen this a million times and I remember everything I don't remember it at all before the, or I didn't before this rewatch uh, in fact I would say this film now tops the Goonies as far as uh, my nostalgia lane films uh, that I've rewatched that I remembered the least like I I think Goonies had that title before this where I really didn't remember much about the Goonies. This one I remembered virtually nothing <laughs> coming into it. But then once I watched it, it all came back to me. I was like, oh, yeah, I remember that. Um, but um, I don't know. As I got some mild enjoyment out of seeing some of those scenes uh, that I remember from kid that I started oh yeah this is what the gremlins are doing this silly thing you know this is when they're wearing those silly costumes I remember really loving that as a kid so I got some sense of nostalgia uh from it but for the most part I was a bored and b thought it was just dumb <laughs> so I um and I kind of was thinking that might be the case for this movie um before I started watching it but I was just so so curious to see it because it's been so long um and, um, yeah, I mean, I don't know if it's worth it to just <laughs> nitpick the plot, because I don't think the plot matters. Uh, I think this was, uh, you know, made to sell movie tickets to kids by having these, like, little monsters go around and do things and, <laughs> and be silly uh, and dress in costumes <laughs> and things like that. Um, so, uh, yeah, but it doesn't make any <laughs> sense, like... Um, why did this dude have a Mogwai? Uh, uh, yeah, like what? What did he use it for? At the end of the movie, he's like, "Oh, well, you're not ready for it yet." But what? What? What do you use it for? Like, what is it for? Like, what? <laughs> it seems like uh, the only thing you could possibly um, the that could possibly come out of having a Mogwai is either it just sits there in a box and does nothing, <laughs> or it turns into gremlins. Um, I don't know. It was. It just didn't make a whole lot of sense. And then, as the film goes goes by, anytime um, you know something happens, like the you know Gizmo starts multiplying, all the characters are so nonchalant about it. Like, oh look, he multiplied. And then when they went into cocoons, like it was creepy looking alien style cocoons that they were in. And nobody was freaked out by this. I'm like, oh, how interesting. They're like, it's just so weird. They're all so nonchalant about it. Um, on the one hand, you could say that uh, this is an allegory about uh, irresponsibility and how, um, you know, our society in general uh, just wouldn't be able to handle something like this. And I think that's what they were trying to get across with the speech from the old man at the end. Um, but it uh, is still a really dumb movie, and it does the plot doesn't really make a lot of sense, like how any of this would happen. Uh, so it's one of those you got to suspend disbelief to enjoy it type of movies. Except that Gremlins dressing in costumes is not something I particularly enjoy anymore. It's just it was definitely geared toward my ten year old brain. Now it's just like eh, it's just dumb. Also. I want to talk about uh, how I think kind of the humans in this movie are the bad guys. Because, like, I I don't know that the gremlins uh, were really trying to cause all that much harm. Like, they did kill... The one gremlin killed that science teacher dude. Uh, but I don't know. Was that on purpose? And then they killed the, the lady by putting her up the stairs thing. They, you know, she's on that thing that rides up the stairs. It goes really fast. She goes flying out the window. But were they trying to do that? I think they were just causing a lot of mischief. And just, you know, <laughs> like, uh, you know, rewiring uh, the telephone. So the telephone goes out. And they were just kind of pranksters. And, like, rewiring the... Uh, snow plow so it goes through the dude's house and uh, they were pl pranksters they were definitely causing trouble they were causing mischief but did they deserve to be put in a microwave and exploded or put into a blender it was kind of disgusting or burned alive you know they were all in the movie theater like oh let's burn them all alive <laughs> like 
just for causing mischief? I mean, I'm not saying they should have been allowed to do that, but it just seems like the punishment doesn't fit the crime here. It seemed a little extreme. It's not like the gremlins were trying to eat people or anything. They were just kind of pranksters or whatever. So, uh, I don't know. Uh, seemed a little over the top for <laughs> to me. Um, and then, uh, I don't know. The ending, you know, the dramatic... Uh, scene in the in the climatic scene in the uh department stores like i don't know what just was not into this movie at all um all right so i'm gonna wrap it up and uh give my rating out of 10 after my rewatch of this movie oh by the way i also forgot to mention that after this rewatch uh the other thing that sucks is i'm never gonna get that fucking song out of my head for weeks <laughs> anyways i had forgotten all about that song anyways rating rating out of 10 that's what this is uh so my rating for gremlins out of 10 i give it a three uh I won't go one or two. Uh, it's a little harsh because I did get some mild enjoyment out of remembering things, you know, tapping into uh, parts of my brain that I haven't accessed in a long time and remembering some of these scenes. I was like, oh, yeah, I remember that. Um, so I won't give it a one or two. But, uh, yeah, this movie's dumb. <laughs> it is so dumb. I can see why it appealed to my 10-year-old self, but it does not age well, and it does not appeal to my adult self at all. It's just so stupid. Um, so, 3 out of 10, uh, my lowest rated Nostalgia Lane movie so far. Okay, so that wraps up my coverage of Gremlins. So join me next month as I venture to do something a little different with my nostalgia lane video so far i have been pulling from my childhood almost exclusively i did one from when i was 16 years old with everything else has been from my childhood which means what i have been reviewing is a whole bunch of 80s movies because that's what my childhood was i did one uh from when i was age 16 from 1990 but 1990s, pretty much the 80s. <laughs> so basically I've been doing all 80s movies and I'm over it. <laughs> I'm ready to move on. Uh, and when I think about it, you know, I am 47, I'm almost 48. Uh, so I can watch movies from my 20s that I first saw when I was in my 20s. And that's still a film that first came out over 20 years ago. <laughs> so that's a whole him. So I can start uh, venturing into films that uh, I saw when I was in my 20s and not just from my childhood. Um, and I'm ready to do that. So that's going to cause me to be reviewing films uh, from the mid to late 90s or early 2000s. And I uh, committed to do that for at least the th next three Nostalgia Lanes at least. And then after that, we'll see um, where, where I go. So up through June, uh, I'm going to be doing uh, films from either the mid to late 90s or the early 2000s. And the first one that I'm going to do in this vein uh, in the month of April 2022 uh, will be from the year 2000. <laughs> it will be almost famous. Uh, I absolutely freaking love this movie. Uh, when it was released, I watched it many, many times over and over and loved it, loved it, loved it, loved it, loved it. Uh, I was in my mid-20s. I think it was, I would have been in the year 2000, I would have been 26 years old. So this is, yeah, my mid-20s, but uh, uh, I loved it. And that, that will uh, probably produce a slightly different uh, version of Nostalgia Lane because I remember a lot more of the experience of watching the film than I would with uh, films that I saw when I was a kid in the 80s. So that part two might be a little bulkier than it usually is. So, uh, but this will be fun. So please join me for that next month. Also, uh, join me for all of my Star Trek reviews and um, my transition videos as I give updates on my personal transition and also talk about other issues and things like that. So check out all of that stuff and I will see you really soon. Goodbye, everyone. <laughs>
Thank you.